to organize, to organize this conference and for inviting me. It's nice to be here. Uh, and yeah, I will talk about, uh, like, I will talk most of the time about some very particular integrable system and at the very end I will be a little bit, uh, give most obvious uh, arguments that of course the system is not single system. There are uh, a few big families of systems that possess uh, Hilbert space fragmentation. Uh, okay, what actually it's about Hilbert space fragmentation? It's a little bit uh, umbrella term. What I uh, really means, I mean this uh, system with a large number of degeneration. And actually, it will be obtained by a little bit uh, naive way. We we'll just take a crystal limit of data to infinity in x z speed, uh, speed chain. And the first uh, slide it doesn't look very promising. It looks a little bit uh, like too primitive, but you will see that it's actually lead uh, to some pretty nice consequence and uh, not not uh, too too simple system as they are. So okay, uh, but now I want to start a little bit from different topic. Uh, I want to talk about uh, be a little bit about motivation of the system. Uh, why we study to study such a model? Uh, and uh, yeah, there is pretty uh, specific motivation to study system with a big uh, number of degeneration because the system clearly violates uh, uh, general the G G Gibbs ensemble. Uh, I would explain in short way what is this. So, okay, in long story short, uh, people for a long time wanted to study how the system thermalizes, not uh, even uh, integrable system, just arbitrary system, quantum system, how it thermalizes. Okay, it's not a big deal to write down. Uh, does it have a pointer? No. Okay, it's not a big deal to write down uh, such an uh, equation. Okay. Uh, where CM is just overlap of uh, initial state, that is Psi0 with uh, eigenstate with of uh, Hamiltonian uh, And for arbitrary operator, it's not a big deal to establish this equation. That is, you see, consists, uh, well, uh, we write it in two terms, uh, that like diagonal terms and uh, non-diagonal terms. And of course, if you, you would try to calculate exactly, well, this expression, it will be not very easy task. Uh, even calculate, uh, let's say, matrix element for arbitrary state, it's already pretty ideal. If operator is relatively non-local, you heard uh, talks today of Frank or, uh, sorry, of, uh, uh, Fyodor or German, uh, it's already uh, quite a challenge. And uh, sum up over all possible states, it will be mission impossible. So what people are trying to do, they uh, try to uh, rely on some hypothesis, on, on some conjecture, and uh, this conjecture happens to be very successful. So one of these basic conjecture was so-called eigenstate thermal, uh, thermalization hypothesis. Uh, it could be considered like some other schematics element. Um, oh, po sorry, probably I missed one definition. So, so what, by the way, people call thermalization. People uh, say that observables is thermalized if uh, average expectation value of this observable uh, agrees with my canonical expectation value. This was like sort of definition that people try to use. Unfortunately, uh, a bunch of problem uh, uh, immediately appears here, it's why people proceed to that and that. Uh, okay, for example, uh, let's try to, to use some sort of ergodicity, so instead of averaging over en uh, ensemble, we'll try average over time. But then uh, the question, uh, where microcanonical ensemble could appear from these terms, for example, if it's uh, even not even time dependent. So it will, uh, under time averaging, it will not behave in any way. With these terms, another problem. These terms, uh, the problem what will be if uh, the system is really big and two, uh, two states are very close to each other. So immediately uh, the, the question that uh, it's exponential, they are exponentially close, it's not very clear how they behave uh, and it's uh, quite a mess. So, okay, people to proceed this engine state thermalization hypothesis where they have nice answers, it's too long to derive it and anyway it's just uh, some sort of good working conjecture but what is important here is that uh, so there is like separate uh, contribution for diagonal terms that already like uh, precise according to conjecture with expectation value in microcanonical ensemble 
and, the, uh, and all diagonal terms, they uh, depend on the entropy of the system in some average energy state. Uh, average, I mean, in this sense, mean value, like between M and energy. Some function f that depends on operator, and some uh, uh, coefficients rm n that depends mostly on state. And uh, using the eigenstate normalization hypothesis, uh, people immediately proceed to averaging over time, and uh, finally they arrive to diagonal and set, row diagonal. So, uh, so summation is taken only with respect to the diagonal element. And so, okay, uh, so at the first, uh, it's somehow it works. Somehow it works, uh, there are, however, uh, and, uh, people, okay, people start to think about integrable system, and here they immediately got some problem. First of all, it happens that the uh, eigenstate normalization hypothesis uh, works only in big sense, uh, so it means that there are some, uh, for some exponentially small um, amount of states, there are violations of this eigenstate normalization hypothesis, whatever. <laughs> like, if it's exponentially small number of states, we will neglect it. We still can use ATH. Uh, okay, people start to apply the ATH, uh, and people proceed from here, from there, to Gibson set. Uh, the only moment uh, they proceed um, so, to so-called generalized Gibson set. Again, it's all sort of hypothesis, so just a uh, very quick explanation, what is this? Usually, Gibson sample is like averaging with this statistical way. In generalized Gibson sample, people decide, okay, let's uh, just, why we should write here this uh, energy? <coughs> Actually, in general case, it will be much more natural to write uh, not only Hamiltonian, but all Hamiltonians. Of course, each Hamiltonian should have uh, its, own, uh, should its own Lagrange multiplier that uh, will be sort of inverse temperature, or it will be like sort of its own inverse temperature for its component. And it was a great success. Uh, there was, uh, I, I'm not sure, but I think Riegel was the one who proposed this hypothesis. Uh, and there was big uh, development if I would write everything, the, every paper that was this hypothesis and sample, generally this Gibson sample was used, it will be like um, many uh, slides uh, in the row. Uh, I just mentioned a few more successful works here, <laughs> or whatever. So... Does everything thermalizes? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's one moment when I want to proceed. Yes, it happens that... Uh, it's some system, systems do, do not thermalize. Yeah, yeah it's what, uh, exactly what I would talk, uh, what, what my talk about. Like, at least the de system is a big degeneration spec will not thermalize. And it's uh, already, you can suggest, somewhere here, just. Uh, already in this form, you see that if energy level, different energy level coincides, and it's uh, for, uh, for, uh, for different uh, um, eigenstates energy coincide, it's already something, to, something very non-natural appears here. And exactly one of our motivations, what I, when I want to study the system is the big degeneration, is because uh, this generalized Gibbs ensemble will spectacular fail, and there will be no thermalization. I will show it a little bit later. And now, now I think I give I gave a more or less general motivation about, for example, it's one of possible motivation what we would want to start the system with stone degeneration. Um, any question? Well, I think uh, people establish this thermalization and so on. It gives also the, the example of free fermions also. What uh, say transfers finitism or Okay. Uh, so I remember talks of Fabian and others, so <coughs> didn't they work with three fermion systems and did they find some organization there? Uh, yes, uh, of course, in a lot of systems, organization of groups. Even, uh, I mean, but three fermion systems have a little bit of a system. I remember wrongly when I, mean, I just wanted. Uh, I think even uh, in. The Free fermion system with this big degeneracy, you could find some operator where my thermalization will occur. So, for, in order to. Okay, I, I won't blame these people, but. Uh, and I'm not specialist in XX, but I, in my talk, I will definitely show when it doesn't uh, work. 
Uh, and yes, as I say, I would st study some very primitive system, and the first book very primitive, I would study the system that could be derived uh, in this way. So QK tilde uh, is just an integral of motion of uh, usual x exact chain. And we would uh, take uh, mm -hmm. integer uh, part of, uh, so we will um, divide this integrals of motion by delta integer part k over 2 for k is integral of motion. And we, by the way, we would uh, consider q4 here. And this is uh, like case integrals of motion our system. And our, as our system, we will consider in uh, k4, by the way. So it's uh, how it looks. Uh, of course, for k equal 2, it's nothing but ordinary easing. Everybody knows this model. For k equal 4, it's a little bit less trivial model. Uh, and uh, despite it's relatively... Anyway, it's relatively easy, and it was uh, discovered by us already a short time before us uh, this uh, paper, at least, where people don't uh, even realize the integrability of the model, but they, I think, derive it more, it's from some other <laughs> argument. And there was a paper of Zadnik in Maritz, uh, Nenak Zadnik, Maritzio Fagotti, and one more paper uh, in this series, where people uh, also studied more models in very detail, uh, it was basically just a few months uh, difference between their paper and ours. Um, so, okay, uh, I don't think that uh, Hamiltonian itself requires too, com uh, too much comments. Uh, the only one thing that you can notice is that this is really Hamiltonian that acts on the four, four consecutive, consecutive sides. Um, Okay, so this way of obtaining uh, data to infinity we call crystal limit models. Of course, this crystal limit automatically, provi automatically provides us with uh, Hamiltonians that are integrable. Uh, and of course, if you know how to take data to infinity in the Hamiltonian, we know how to take data to infinity in the better equation. So automatically we know better equations, algebra, co coordinate better on that, but we should realize uh, CA is that we don't know how to take it in a parallel equation. And the answer is, the reason is more or less clear, because in, when you derive uh, Hamiltonians from the uh, Lux operator, you sh so sh what should you do? You first take the derivative over spectral parameter, and next you satisfy its special point, that also depends on this uh, data. Uh, and sort of uh, mass continues, uh, mass appears. So, we cannot derive Lux operator or R matrix for this Hamiltonian from the usual x exact chain. So what's the Hamiltonian if you take delta to infinity? Ah, it was on the previous side. Of course, this proper, this proper uh, normalization. So what was the delta? Delta? It's usual data in this exact chain. So what's, what's the problem? Maybe you have so to do that's a delta, delta uh, is linear in delta, yes? And divide. Uh, uh, this is square. If you take the false integral of motion, then it has delta squared. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. Now, do you know? Let's ask uh, right, just by chart what is delta. Delta is <laughs> Q plus Q inverse over two. This is delta. But I think uh, Professor Bajan wants to know what is the force integral of motion for x axis. Before you do the motion. No, no. Of course, I don't remember it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, yeah. no, but the first integral of motion is uh, uh, divided by delta. So we have sigma z, sigma z, yes? Uh, yes, it's an easy model. As I say, it's Q2, yes. It's weak, yes, of course. But I want to choose like Hamiltonian Q4. It's my choice, what I call Hamiltonian, yes, in this system. So I just choose Q4. Mm -hmm. yeah, no, 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 nothing more deep here. I just choose whatever I want to call Hamiltonian. But doesn't it commute with Q2? Of, of course, course, of course. Uh, of course. So what about the spectrum? So uh, isn't it easier to calculate the spectrum of the icing? It's, it commute? it's very easy, as I say, because uh, a literally stop in that moment. If you know a better equation for x and z, What's the problem? Say, take da limit data to infinity there. No problem. You will immediately obtain spectrum of that model. Everything is very simple. And of course, here you immediately think, okay, I have better equation for x exact model. They depend on data. I send data to infinity. Some number of degeneration will probably occur. Okay, it will definitely occur, and you will see. Uh, so, the only moment that I stopped, uh, 
Lux, one small, lux operator and R matrix could not be derived by this unit. They should be derived in other way. And I will do it, the, uh, I will show it in the very end of my talk. So what you mean is if I take the R matrix and I renorm, rescale so that I, am, I can take Q to infinity? You cannot do it. Because when you derive integrals of motion, you take derivative. Next, you sub substitute the special point that's like this right. dependent delta. It doesn't work in this way. And moreover, when you will see a lax operator, you will mean, understand that it definitely cannot appear in this, from this lax operator, in the, from this unit. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so you should finish. You still have a lot of time. You should finish in 45 minutes. 45 minutes, okay. <laughs> so we, we <laughs> okay, so let us. Uh, um, by the way, any questions? More questions? Okay, if there is no question, let us proceed to what I already said. We know, of course, the equation for the XXZ model. And here I will, uh, for simplicity, let's uh, just say that we assume existence of uh, string hypothesis. Uh, for us, it's not important that there are deviations from string hypothesis in the sense that the strings are not ideal strings. For us, it's, uh, what is, what is matters is that there are proper number of strings. And so we count all solutions. And then here I will write nothing less that nothing else that uh, bad equation for strings uh, of lengths uh, n and m. Um, and uh, okay, I didn't write explicitly uh, s matrix for for x exact spin chain. I think everybody could uh, find it in the literature, and everybody could uh, take uh, take the simple limit delta to infinity here. And it, he will immediately arrive to this set, set of equation. Uh, so, okay, so what is written here? And what is uh, interesting here is it's, it's interesting that there are now like basically two types of lines. Strings of length one and strings, and strings of length more than one. And between every other types of, uh, it doesn't matter whether it's strings length two or whether it's strings length ten. They all behave in the same way. And they behave in a very spectacular way, they don't behave at all. <laughs> when, when I left on the town, it's very important property. Uh, they just literally static, static particles that just don't physically don't move on, uh, on the lattice. It's, uh, you can just act on them in Hamiltonian, you obtain uh, zero eigenvalue. They have zero energy that they don't move. The only way to move these uh, strings of length more than two is interact with the, with the usual particles. Particles, the, so strings length one are dynamical, then you move, they interact with each other, they interact with strings. Uh, by the way, now we will call strings a domain wall and uh, show, I would show graphically how they interact. Uh, but uh, right here, right now, I would write uh, skating matrices. So scaling matrices, as you see from bad equations, they are very simple. And uh, what, uh, by the way, you already could understand that uh, bad equation is indeed very simple. I think everybody agrees with this statement. Yes? So P, P capital uh, P is the sum of... Yeah, yeah. Uh, so now I will explain. So PS is the uh, total momentum of all strings. I call strings the string with length more than one. Uh, P1 is the total momentum of all particles. And um, here, n1 is number of particles, and s is total number of strings with um, length more than one again, what I call strings. And, okay, this is basically better equation for the particles. Better equation for the strings are basically absent, they are stuck. Um, okay, everybody agrees that this equation is uh, pretty has uh, yes, degenerate solution. Mm, okay, it of course depends on boundaries, but it has. Um, okay, basically, any question at this moment? Is it like hard road a bit, no? Yeah, you will arrive to this point, it's exactly hard road. Mm -hmm. Moreover, we could it's, uh, say that this is hard road uh, using something like some analog of TT bar deformation. I will show this. Uh, so, so, okay, here uh, I just wanted to show graphically scattering between particles and domain walls. Uh, it's a relatively simple process. Uh, so so the, uh, it did, it's a sort of hard uh, model. Uh, you see that itself, um, domain walls are not, <coughs> not <coughs> particles are dynamical. They, they are moving. 
When particles uh, approach to the main wall, they cannot move, they edit its behave like a hard rod. It cannot just approach and uh, like sort of fuse with this domain wall. But what it can, can happen, it can happen uh, that this particles jump here and uh, these two particles will uh, fuse in, in new sort of small domain wall and this side will uh, uh, move to this side. And there is sort of propagation here. Uh, another pr process is uh, scattering of single particles with a small domain wall. Here you can again see that they cannot uh, approach each, each other, they can, uh, even for side one, so like fuse each other, they can just jump via each other, so like particle literally jump over the uh, domain wall. In this moment, domain wall obtains a shift, and particle also obtains shift in trajectory by one. <coughs> um, and how do you show that they that they cannot sit next to each other? So uh, you, you solve your uh, your uh, your uh, your, uh, your um, these beta Takahashi type equations, I guess. Or? Uh, for example, uh, just I would make prepare such state and act by this, uh, and it will be just not eigenstate even. Mm -hmm. I can just build the like, eigenstate, and uh, it will be just not. So is it a cellular automaton sort of? Uh, well, soft of if uh, you c you can build from here cellular automaton yes, mm -hmm. but you can think about it. Uh, so there are no real phases. That's what I mean. You are just telling the rules how they guide this guy yeah. moves. Well, I am not telling you, but it's the, yes, I am telling you, but it's not established by hand. It's followed from the Hamiltonian. Mm -hmm. You for that this was shown to you. Of course, I skipped a lot of details because other uh, Carl to I. Uh, how to check it, but by the way, it's simple. You just uh, check Hamiltonian and see whether it's eigenstate, whether it's not eigenstate. Uh, but, okay, if you, uh, indeed, if you build um, writings in two-dimensional diagram, it will be uh, what you, uh, yes, yeah, cellular automaton. Um, okay, uh, what, so basically we almost finished with this part. The only one uh, moment that I want to add on this, uh, on this stage that we want to apply uh, so-called we are able to apply so-called dual transformation. Uh, what is uh, dual transformation will, will be if two particles on the neighboring side give this uh, product of two operators on the neighboring side give one, then we will uh, um, set on bond, uh, so, so we proceed from between two sides, there is bond. And on this bond will be uh, some like hole. If two neighboring particles the eigenvalue will give you product minus one, on the board will be particle. Or you can say it's like spin up, spin down. Uh, there is some problem with this bond side transformation on the boundaries, uh, but uh, we don't care too much. Uh, by the way, uh, for physicists it's more important at the end thermodynamic limit and some boundary is not too problem. Not too much depends on boundaries. And, uh, okay, so there is also a problem with first charge uh, in, after such uh, bond side transformation. The first uh, quad, the very first integral of motion, became uh, still very, very non local. But uh, we are not care too much about this. Uh, why is the side bond transformation is important? I would say uh, because it's a more easy start uh, for this. Uh, in this picture, uh, generalization of uh, is uh, more simple. M generalization of other uh, system and also it's uh, more si simple to uh, deal with the, uh, with the real relations that we want to develop. Uh, well, why it's more simple? Uh, well, uh, even from the point of view that uh, Q2, Q3, Q4 looks more simple in this picture. For, and for, for, for instance, uh, how transformation is, is uh, done that Charge Q2 in the original picture, on this one side picture, became one side uh, operator, while here it was two side. Three side Q3 become two side, uh, ah, Q3 remains Q, uh, three side operator, and Q4, that was four side operator, that initial Hamiltonian that I write like uh, the limit data to infinity, it became also three side operator, jj plus one, j plus two. 
Uh, it, well, it's a little bit more pleasure to work with Hamiltonian of uh, that axon C size, just uh, if you want uh, guess LL equation, for example, just if you want to the derive it simply. Um, well, basically, and uh, it's a little bit simpler for generalization. And, uh, okay, uh, in, uh, a little bit more about comparison of two pictures. Uh, in the first picture, as, as I said, there are particles and domain walls. Uh, the, where domain walls are not uh, dynamical on their own. Particles are... Uh, dynamical, uh, so here we also uh, have um, two types of uh, particles, I would say double particles and single. And what are dynamical here? Dynamical are only this double particles. So the only non-zero ele elements on the basis uh, uh, are here uh, in QS, in the integrals of motion, are this uh, matrix element. Uh, while um, the single particles in this picture uh, will be completely frozen. Configurate. And, okay, so, so but basically, what we are, uh, I think, ah, okay, yes. So I think it's time to make some micro conclusion. The micro conclusion that uh, because of our system is strongly de degenerate, we have a giant number of domain walls. These domain walls, they are changing states. Of course, if you just randomly flat on the, your lattice, a uh, large number of uh, these do uh, non-dynamical domain walls, it will be already different state. But of course, they will uh, they not contribute to the energy since are not, they are not dynamical. And there is a big number of degeneracies. So it's already like this good candidate on the violation of the general Gibbs ensemble. And now we can proceed to this part. Uh, Ex explicitly to show and set up some example where there will be violation of GG. Uh, what is the time? I will tell you, you still have a lot of time. Please, go ahead. Okay, um, I think I could skip probably this void part and proceed to <laughs> something more interesting. <laughs> probably I will skip this too. <laughs> yes, yeah. You still have uh, more than 20 minutes. If somebody will uh, specifically interest in okay. here about exact calculation of quench, I will show this a little bit more to the end. But let's now, I promise it to you a long time from the very beginning to show violation of GG. I would able to show it, unfortunately, only numerically because not, life is not so easy and uh, we could not uh, like spend years of calculation. Even in relatively this simple system, uh, calculation of uh, quench will be not so easy, but still. So, let us proceed. We want to calculate uh, dynamic of some operator, uh, relaxation dynamic. So, uh, so we in initially, our system is prepared in state, some initial state C0. Of course, it's not eigenstate. So, we expand, uh, we insert uh, twice unity and uh, rewrite uh, this operator like uh, we are double sum. Where A, B uh, bracket are, of course, eigenstate. Uh, so, what is wrong with this picture? Of course, uh, I suppose here non degeneration of uh, energy level. If in case of uh, the degeneration of uh, energy level, sh additional uh, uh, indices should appear. And yes, I forgot here energy. This uh, phase factor with uh, time dependence. That should be here. And uh, Okay, uh, generally we can, uh, of course, uh, study arbitrary operator with arbitrary initial, uh, with arbitrary initial condition psi zero. Uh, what we choose for the simple demonstration of uh, GG, uh, here, well, we are able to, to choose any example in order to show that something doesn't work. Let's do this very simple psi zero, and let's uh, take this very simple uh, operator decay. Uh, so this all will be decay. And Let's, uh, I will show you numerical result about this. So uh, why we uh, took this very specific uh, initial state? Because it's very convenient uh, for calcula uh, to calculate using term uh, uh, numeric using a time wall block decim decimation, whatever. I don't want to go to details about numeric, but exactly what you, what you can see here, I think the most uh, actually useful is the second picture. So, this is the behavior of real part of this operator D. Uh, so D is just D is just a product of this sigma minus operator. Um, 
we took, uh, we calculate uh, this uh, in a few different magnetic fields for zero magnetic fields, for magnetic fields H1, 2, 2 4, and uh, we see that indeed, uh, and we build a plot of uh, a real part of D1 with the time. And we really see the sort of persistent oscillation with periods that directly depend on magnetic field. That, of course, directly is, is contrary to this uh, generalizing uh, Gibbs ensemble that predicts that should not be any sort of oscillation. What was H? Yeah, H. H? H magnetic field. Uh, yeah, sorry. But suppose I, uh, suppose I knew what, what kind of Hamiltonians you were choosing, and I, and I tailor made an operator which would <laughs> middle that. Uh, that there would be some oscillations. I mean, shouldn't there some discussion be a notion of a typical operator? I mean, would you expect that all operators should necessarily thermalize? Or? Well, uh, probably, the, very probably, we can choose here some operators that will be thermalized. But this is our goal to do. Well, if something is thermalized, beautiful. Then generalized Gibbs ensemble is working. But we wanted to explicitly show that uh, Unfortunately, for general Gibbs ensembles, there are some cases when it doesn't work. And uh, well, I mean, the statement is about long time asymptotics. So how can you get it from any numerics? Mm -hmm. Well, it depends on your calculation power. Of course, uh, of oh, course, no, you I can. Mean, <laughs> the long time is the longest long time, time possible to compute the collection. So no calculation power will help. Well, I can show, uh, draw you a function uh, which uh, drops after, just after your calculation time is over, drops down to zero. Right. Yeah. Beautiful. Uh, <laughs> I would not, could not prove, of course, that this persistent oscillation will be persistent always. This is like uh, a bit mission impossible uh, because it would uh, mean that I really can't calculate like ex ex exact, exact questions, okay? But uh, generalized Gibbs ensemble prediction would give you, will not, it's already what you see here, it's already violation. Mm -hmm. It's predicts an absolutely different picture, even short distance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So where is the generalized if you have ensemble? If you have massless, massless uh, excitation, like photon, photon and spin, uh -huh. you mix the radiation, uh, prepare the radiation at certain temperature and the spin, single spin, condom model, and you switch on the interaction, electromagnetic interaction. There will be no thermalization whatsoever. Why? Because you have massless zero energy excitation. And obviously you do have zero energy excitation because you have uh, yes, because you have a uh, different uh, de degenerated spectrum. So you shouldn't expect any thermalization here at all? Well, sort of, yes. <laughs> sort of. But GGE doesn't uh, say you anything about this. GGE tells you that it will be thermalization. Mm. As far as I know. They expect. So my statement is there is uh, some contact there, nothing more. Uh, any more questions? Because now we will proceed a little bit to different topics. And honestly, uh, Herman asked the question, I a little bit didn't uh, make here an error, I didn't clarify that. Of course, uh, what we call Hamiltonian is the question. So here I was using the following Hamiltonian was used. Because uh, otherwise, if I just write Q4, it's really not clear what is H. And H is coupled to this Hamiltonian via adding Q2. So that was easing, right? Q2. Yeah, like I add, add to my Q4, that is, of course, doesn't depend on magnetic field, some Q2. So just shoot like five. But they commute, no? Q2. Yes, of course, of course, they are both integral of motion. As, as, as I say, I can. In an integrable system, I can choose a Hamiltonian any combination of integrals of motion. I just uh, so, so, but in your in your picture, is there also uh, the, the prediction from the GGE? There should be some line. Where is the limit? There is that drawn or not drawn? Uh, no, it's not. Hmm. But what's the but, 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 but the magnetic field? So you couple with Q two? Yes. Or you couple with Q one? 
Yeah, but because there is this mapping duality, so Q. Uh, ah, no, 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 no. We calculated this. We calculated it in the original picture. Uh, so, so pro probably I made an error uh, he, here. It was coupled with Q1. Yes. Very probably. Uh, honestly, it could be could be clarified. <laughs> Did anyone prove that uh, for generalized hint ensemble there should be terminalization? No. Nobody proves anything for generalized Gibbs ensemble. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a hypothesis. Yes. Just uh, for the normal Gibbs ensemble, does anyone prove terminalization? Gibbs. I said no, no. This is why I start from agent state thermalization hypothesis. This is why it's called a hypothesis. Well, maybe I make too strong statement, but. People from other side also like my statements that GG is exact stuff. So, who did such a thing? Sorry. If you take delta to be large but finite, do you expect uh, what do you expect? Delta large but finite. Uh, well, that still uh, so. so uh, if I could proceed for first slide, still there will be nearly a problem. Uh, so, so probably there will be like very slow thermalization because let, let's see, anyway, if much finite, there will be no exact degeneration, but still there will be this problem that these states are exponentially small, for example, and uh, then, okay, uh, it's near violation of e ATH. Uh, of course, I cannot, it's quite, say you qual qualitatively. It should be calculated, like but how close. Thermagnetic regime. So the all spins should be up. You know? yeah. Well, it's definitely, yeah, it's like the question in which regime also, yes. So, well, so, so, sorry, but, uh, like so, so what, what kind of state is psi zero? This, uh, the it, state. it is the sum of all the coordinate basis vectors. Mm -hmm. right? It's a tensor product, it's one, one. one, 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 one. So it's, it's really everything. So, Oh, uh, it's zero. Uh, I would, uh, so sorry, so like your question is, uh, answer to your question probably will be how how fast we approach to the data equal <laughs> zero, yes? Because it's like important here. Yes. And probably after some moment it will be back down, before some moment not, but... Uh, I could not tell quantitatively. Yes, Andreas. I, I didn't get which kind of two-point correlation function you investigated. That was the tailored, uh, conserved local uh, operator. Or was it spin-spin? Uh, it was sigma... Uh, sigma minus. The elementary... Sorry, sigma, oh, sorry. sigma minus. Sorry. This one. This operator. For k equal 1. Uh, no, I don't think it uh, was k equal 1, sorry. Uh, yeah, for k equal 1, yes. For k equal 1, yeah, okay. Yeah. So this is really very elementary observable, yeah. so it's not a particular observable. Right? So this yes. is tailored to, to, to be preserved. Right? So uh, some minutes before somebody asked this question, I mean, that if one shouldn't be surprised to see oscillations, I mean, if you um, I'll ask for the uh, correlation function of a particularly um, a tailored observable. But this is not tailored. I mean, this is just elementary spin spin correlation function, right? Yes, okay. So one point function. Yes, okay. Yes. So one point. One, one point function, of course. Yeah, even the one point function. Oh, thank, thank you. Yeah, so it's a one point function. The elementary one point function that shows oscillation. Yeah, that's interesting. It's not like yeah. a kind of precession of some spin. Of, of, um, um, I could give more comment, <laughs> like. Uh, you must understand the origin of these oscillations. Ah, well, here for some calculation and was will be applied. We don't even try. We just how the goal was like too simplest. Even this, this uh, everything here actually a little bit tailored in order to make a little bit uh, simple this numerical procedure. Because uh, calculation, analytical calculation will anyway took some time and we wanted just quick to show the, that what was expected in system is the generation will be a lot of problem with GG. 
but indeed it kind of looks like the imaginary parts might be the other part of the oscillation and the, the, the norm is maybe constant and uh, the phase uh, moves around. I think we can proceed uh, how much time? You still have 15 minutes. Beautiful. So uh, I, hopefully I will be able to, to proceed to investigate in problems that is uh, sort of always planned. But before I would give uh, some motivation uh, and uh, some idea how we come to idea to generalize the system a little bit. And it comes from idea of, uh, like already people pointed out in the audience, it sort of looks of sort of hard road. Indeed, and uh, it looks sort of hard road and sort of, sort of argument from the theory of Kitty bar deformation come to our mind. So what is the uh, theory of Kitty bar deformation uh, in very short words for those who don't know? We can always uh, make some deformation of Hamil uh, integrable Hamiltonian in order to preserve integrability up to some order by uh, making deformation of Hamiltonian uh, with uh, some um, uh, with some current and some uh, and some uh, charge, where alpha and beta in general can. Uh, Actually, it can be general. Of course, uh, Q and alpha should satisfy this uh, continuity equation. Or we could see, think about them, uh, them like this. And what is x, x here? It's like total conserved charge are given like sum over all, all sides. The total uh, conserved current is given like a sum over all possible charge. And uh, OK. Uh, how skating matrix will be, uh, in the, let's write skating matrix in this way we are skating families. And it could be like easy shown that in this case, uh, if Hamiltonian deforms in this way, then skating families <coughs> will deform in this way. And of course, uh, here, um, so H alpha beta is uh, one particle's eigenvalue function of these charges. And uh, what I, uh, Still, here I don't uh, fix it. What is uh, H uh, alpha H beta? I can take any one from the set of conserved charges. And what is usually called in quantum field theory, what is called Titi bar deformation, in quantum field theory, Titi bar deformation, it's uh, when H alpha beta ch uh, chooses energy and momentum correspondence. In our case, we, well, we, uh, we call it like Titi bar like deformation. We can uh, choose. For example, no, well, in our case, it will be so-called hard rod deformation. So, h alpha h beta will be particle number and momentum, uh, and something happens. <laughs> we know how to solve this. So let's ask. Uh, so so in, uh, under the, if we literally took this hard dot deformation, so h alpha h beta is particle number momentum, then um, our uh, scattering matrix will deform in this way. And next, uh, let's us uh, take SPK initial SPK here. It's probably better to write SPK zero. It will be just minus one, and K equal one. Then we came to really to our uh, Ah, so if uh, if we uh, choose uh, parameter, parameters like this, then we definitely come to the armatics of our model. You, I wrote it much earlier. In, it was in bad answers. So what, what it correspond to? Ah, okay, what correspond to SPK equal minus one, initial SPK. It correspond to XX model. It's scattering matrix of XX model. Kappa um, equal one. Um, well, kappa equal 1 is our choice of parameter, parameter kappa. So, we come to conclusion that sort of our x, our models Q form, that we call, by the way, folded xxz, uh, is, is sort of similar, very similar to really hard dot deformation of x, nothing but xx model, nothing but hard dot deformation of if I and of course, here I should be immediately uh, saying the following words that, rigorously speaking, all these arguments are totally wrong because, uh, in order to define uh, properly TT bar deformation, we should have, uh, according to our own arguments, we should have uh, that this uh, uh, H alpha beta local operators, uh, one, uh, we have not, to, uh, but we use it momentum like uh, operator, and uh, we have not, unlike it's a local momentum operator. 
of Q1 is particle number of Q2 is energy. Uh, momentum, uh, what, is local? what is the local operator of momentum? We have it. But, so, so it's more like analogy that we can say is that it's sort of TT by deformation, it's uh, absolutely non rigorous argument. But still, we keep in mind this, this uh, analogy, and uh, we will proceed to the next chapter uh, in very skating problem. So, here I would uh, immediately a little bit generalize our model. And uh, I would uh, later prove that uh, this generalization is also integrable. So, we will let us introduce this uh, two projection operator in a very simple way. Then, HJJ plus 1. Written in this way, it's uh, an, a total Hamiltonian at sum of J, A, J, J plus 1. It's nothing but a Hamiltonian of usual X exact chain. It's like literally nothing here happens else as usual, uh, as I write usual X exact chain in a new way. And next, let us make hydrogen deformation. What does it mean? Let's here, instead of 1, will be a psi A. So uh, interaction will be, doing, will be taken in this way. Here, side, interact only with here, j, j plus n. And this will be this, and so on. And in between, we will insert, uh, insert this operator that uh, follow from j plus 1 to j n minus 1. j, j plus n minus 1. This is projectors. So literally, it looks like a hard lot, because let's take this picture. We have to operate. We have Hamiltonian. This is just usual, so, sort of usual Hamiltonian of Heisenberg chain. And in between, we put a lot of these controls. So particles cannot approach closer than this distance. Okay, so case uh, L equal 1 is obviously uh, usual x in z speed chain. And what will be case L equal? Uh, Okay, uh, well, a, a equal 2 is nothing uh, with data equal 0, it's nothing but dual representation, nothing like our previous model that we discussed already half an hour, but in dual representation. The dual representation that I mentioned will be very, seem very useful for generalization. Um, what else? Okay, and the, probably I should mention one more specific case when a equal 2 and delta equal 0, it, it will coincide with Barrier model a bit at u equal 1. If somebody specifically interested in this graphic. Okay. Um, so, basically, we, we now came to the conclusion that our initial model is sort of a deformed XX model. Moreover, we can generalize it and make a draw deformation of x and z model. Of course, uh, our original model saw, uh, saw in dual picture that I mentioned. Of course, from our new folded x and z model, we can build uh, coordinate beta and z. There are uh, as, ex, exactly in the same way uh, like we do, uh, do it for xx, so uh, high dot xx or high dot xxz. So there are like three types of density matrices between, uh, between particles, between domain walls and particle domain walls. Um, and as uh, x exact here is nothing but scattering of um, usual scattering of uh, x exact spin chain, as matrix of x exact spin chain, I will not write it here, I think everybody could remember it. So, okay, uh, don't know whether I should give uh, co uh, some co too much comments about these beta vectors because, uh, well, it's standard uh, coordinate beta The only one fact that I wanted to mention is that, okay, uh, as I said uh, in, ex uh, in dual picture, XX picture, and the same here, there are two types of uh, particles, and this like real particles, and this, this sort of, uh, this uh, un unmobile particles, non dynamic. And okay, as I mentioned from the beginning, it's all very interesting, but unfortunately with this uh, crystal limit or data to infinity limit, we don't, uh, we cannot uh, build uh, lux, lux structure for, in this case. We need um, somehow, if we want to make something uh, like a real equation, we should find it now. And uh, if you could not be obtained, just take a data to infinity. Um, and okay. 
to be honest, of course, there are no good method how to find lux operators. Uh, it could be raised, I guess it. Uh, and so, so sort of using, uh, using some arguments, uh, we were able to do it. Well, uh, so, uh, actually, the procedure is more like, like this. Uh, you build for some final chain uh, your something that you suggest to be lux. Uh, ch check whether this uh, will transfer matrix from this flux operator checks whether it commutes with itself. Nothing, uh, nothing uh, deep here. Of course, it can be done for only for finite chain. And next, you can substitute uh, this flux operator in RLL equation and fi fix uh, R matrix from RLL equation. And next, you substitute the, this R matrix in beta in uh, young box equation and uh, final check whether your su uh, initial suggestion was correct or not. Fortunately, it was correct. Okay, we have lux operator. Uh, actually, uh, there were, um, were more deep arguments how to guess lux in some particular case. Uh, it, it is described uh, in, the paper, in the paper of Tamash Gombor and Balash Pushgai and was uh, yesterday presented by Anna in her talk. So basically, absolutely the same argument. But uh, there is no time to speak about this now. Let's just give the result. So we build here L hat operator, with uh, which the uh, usual lux operator connected with uh, lux hat with uh, using this just permutation, like usually. And what is here written? Here written the following fact. Lux operator here exactly mm, well, in very similar manner, like it was in total, it acts in double auxiliary space. It's, it doesn't mean fusion, it's like literally just two auxiliary space, tens of products of them. Each one uh, of them has a spin one half representation. And quantum space also is spin one half. And we, it will be denoted by letter J. So, what is written here? Like lux operator, two auxiliary space, one, uh, one quantum space. And uh, LXXZ is nothing but a lux operator of six vertex model. Did uh, I finish this? Okay. Uh, so, R matrix, uh, literally, it will be. To, I have at the very end of my slide, if somebody wants to look at this matrix element explicitly, what is important here? This R matrix has no difference form. All this row, they are, have no difference form. And there are definitely no good way to even guess any possible transformation to difference form. Even worse, there is one way bad property of this R matrix. If you remember, for example, simple XXZ uh, R matrix, uh, this ma uh, diagonal elements of this matrix, or if you th think about Gau in terms of Gauss decomposition of R matrix, uh, so it will be cartons, they are invertible. Here, cartons are in invertible, they are degenerate. And this is a major problem. Major problem in terms of uh, how to uh, find algebraic structure of this matrix, how to find what is algebra symmetry of this, this R matrix. It's like, and moreover, it's a big uh, problem for application. Because usually, if you are able to ex expand your RLL equation in this Gauss structure, and uh, then you can, could, could build the Greenfield currents and using projection method to reference to Enrique Spakuriak Hroshkin, who knows, who don't know, it's just too long to explain, but usually, if you know how to explain this RLL equation in Gauss structure, you know how to build better vectors. Here, is just this expansion in the, uh, Gauss structure will be. Let's say not easy, because uh, if uh, cartons are degenerated, you have just not enough an, an, uh, amount of equation in expansion. So it was already like discussed, it's like, okay, right now, absolutely not clear. We, we know lux operator, but have no clue how to build algebraic bad transats here, for example. And this, so here the E's, they are the, the, the matrix units, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah of, course, of course. So this is a 16 by 16 matrix. Yes, right? yes, of course. But because it's, and, and here see. it's 4 by 4 in which, in sort of, because now we have an A, a B, and an A prime, and a B prime. So uh, let's see, lux operator. One quantum space and auxiliary space is done. Air matrix. Right, so which, which are the E's and which are the, the actual 4 by 4 matrix? So in there, you have a 4 by 4 matrix. Is this on A and B, or on uh, C and D, or on something? Ah, uh, 
Well, it's, uh, yes, I think uh, the, this I live in A and B, and this space in C and D. The rows are some functions of the Well, of course, I, if, if you want to see them explicit, three sides, uh, sorry, there are seven of them. And, well, if somebody knows how to make a transformation to the different... Does it satisfy young Baxter equation? Of course! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's not how to do it in And I pointed it out. It's like, basically, we guess a flux operator. In order to be sure that our guess is correct, we should check our, that our matrix satisfies young Baxter. Otherwise, we are not even sure that we are not making a mistake. So, uh, uh, let's look at your lux operator. Yeah. If you turn this lux operator uh, uh, 90 degree, it will be um, 2 by 2 matrix. It will be a quantum state. So it, it will be always 8 by 8, because 3 spaces. Yes. Still yeah. not Two by two. No, no, the spin one half in one direction. Let's take another direction, which is still two by two. Mm -hmm. So in the vertical mm -hmm. direction, it will be intertwined by six vertex matrix, usual six vertex matrix, yes? Mm -hmm. So uh, what you present, is you present a solution which is uh, intertwined by usual six vertex matrix. Uh, I would not make the statement, I don't know. It means in this direction. <coughs> I understand. I didn't check this. I wouldn't this say whether it's correct or not. I don't know. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I could just say I know what I know. But you should check. That's the first question to check. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> I mean, well, it's <laughs> not a question. Yet. I suggest you uh, come to Actually, I am uh, already almost at the end. So, like, just some people wanted uh, to, to look explicitly on this. Uh, and I, okay, of course, the, uh, from here, I mean, you may be the first idea that you want to take. Uh, rational limit, I would say that it's also, of course, possible. Uh, there is, of course, a rational automatic, there is a usual uh, lux operator. Um, and, uh, well, basically, could be so, they say, folded exec, ah, okay. The moment that I promised you, but I don't, didn't say, I say that there is not only one model, there are a lot of models. Of, of course, uh, there are a lot of models. Since we have a uh, new young Baxter, we can build, we basically consider one of representation of young Baxter. We can consider, consider make, uh, it's, actually, it's not even fundamental representations that we obtain in this uh, way. We could consider the fundamental representation of Young-Baxter and next make a lot of fusions and build like bench of models. Moreover, there are different, uh, there are some logical uh, generalizations starting from this specific form of mathematics. But, uh, okay, actually it's literally time to maybe stop. <laughs> uh, so I would not say, say about all possible uh, generalization, but there are some, uh, let's say, space for creativity here, and uh, we present not only one family of models, but few. At least the very first uh, idea of creativity would be, we started from XZ model. Well, we can start from Pechschutz model. So, as you see, spin, fundamental spin, uh, spin chains, and uh, proceed, make all this operation, actually it was done, and we have the also matrix that uh, looks even more scary, because it's 81 by 81, whatever. Uh, and again, it's a big so, 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 new family of solutions. Each of them has the general spectrum. So, so um, what I want, aha, this moment already a little bit described, but uh, oh well, basically it's all. I <laughs> Questions on dinner. <laughs> so, uh, is it uh, your R matrix? Is it related to the R matrix of Barif model in any way? R matrix itself. Uh, 
I, there was the name Maria for it, but there are several uh, Maria forms. The one with the projector inside. Yeah. <laughs> the same. Oh, it's, it's even worse. I I should. Uh, yeah, I really don't know which way we are talking about. <laughs> Sorry. So I literally don't know which body we are talking about, but it's a few of them. Transparency? Yes, yes. Yeah, okay, so the one you showed uh, at the transparency. Uh, let me think. No, no, it's not. Related. The, the, I, don't, I remember that it's not related because that uh, body of model has not this ugly property of the generator class. That uh, uh, body of model, uh, if you remember the Yasha, he was able to do this, this the uh, current expansion. And here, it, it probably this, uh, the, there everything was okay. Here it's like exactly the case when his method failed. Mm. Because it's degenerating, uh, but it doesn't work. No, it doesn't work. But okay, yeah, I tell many times that they are degenerate. So it, it is definitely not by you. Um, there was this question before about the persistent oscillations mm -hmm. you saw. Uh, was it created? You, you you didn't have an explanation for them, or or do you? Oh, or, we, or? Like point of theoretical point of view, we don't have any explanation. We don't even try. We just check it numerically. Example of that. Are you familiar with this notion of dynamical symmetry that some people have studied? So, be an operator that satisfies a certain commutation relation with your Hamiltonian, and if it exists. Then it should be persistent oscillations. I don't think that sigma one. No, no, it, it, it's some operator. Yeah, yeah. You have to construct it and then show yeah, it. Yeah, but that operator that we write definitely don't uh, commute with Hamiltonian white. No, no, it shouldn't commute. It should uh, should satisfy a certain commutation relation. Ah, okay. So, so not not commute. Okay, so, sorry, I don't. So, so I, I can tell you what yeah. it is, but I know nothing more than like okay. basics. The so, only so that I can tell that. Uh, Honestly, violation of GGE was observed even with usual XXZ. But there, there was, uh, it was a gr group of uh, Prozen, uh, well, basically Ljubljana group. But they play, uh, I think it's Ilyevsky Prozen, but they play a lot uh, in, with usual XXZ with some uh, initial condition. Uh, so, so with some initial state and some operator, so they find some anomalous uh, operators. We just took uh, the, some Absolutely random one. I don't think uh, that uh, it's by coincidence we. It was the story about time crystals. That's, uh, that's yeah, yeah, it's for that. It's for that. It's kind of Q root affinity uh, case, I think. Yeah, yeah, okay. But what I'm referring to is also from the Ljubljana group. Uh, yeah, it's also from Ljubljana, yeah. yes. So I guess we'll stop at this point and defer all. <laughs>